Hey guys, welcome to um, this third and final part of this tutorial series. So in this video, we'll be going over relighting and creating clouds with uh, the volume fog, as well as how to achieve the best uh, motion blur. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Now let's disable the optical flow and uh, motion blur for now. What I want to do now is um, we have the flames and smoke to a place where I'm kind of happy with it. But there's just one problem, and that is that the flames aren't casting lighting on the model itself. But we can change that by creating a quick 3D setup with lights. We already have copied this camera once, so we can actually just build upon this. Let's just move this up a little bit to create some more space. And let's create a merge 3D. Let's pipe this camera in there. Copy the merge with the animation. Pipe that in, and then we pipe this part into there. Alt and drag and um, hide incoming connections to make it a bit tidier. Now, if we also create a render 3D, quickly just view that, switch it to hardware render, and then enable lighting. Now we have a new quick 3D setup with just the uh, model. And if we were to add a merge 3D here, let's also just move this up like this. If we just view that, now we still have the model here, but it's not affected by the projections or the particles. It's on its own. We can add a point light. We just add this in here. Let's move it also so that it is on the same side as the camera. Just move it like so. Now we essentially have a lighting pass. If we just to quickly show you what this is doing, if we have the base render here, create a merge, view that, and pipe that in. And then uh, since we are in linear space, if we now increase the burn in, you can see we now have overlaid the uh, white part. So if we were to change this color to fire, maybe move the lighting to better fit the, the source. If we just lower the opacity here, I mean, we could add a normal map and do lots of stuff with it. But um, I mean, just having this little light here is uh, quite nice, I think. To increase the realism here, we could also go into the point light, go into the intensity, right click, modify with shake. That way we can, um, if we just view this, we're now creating, lower the smoothness, something like that. And then maybe the minimum would be half and then Maybe we can add the increase the smoothness to 1.5 like that. If we overlay this on top now, we've essentially added lighting on the model. We could also increase the blend. We could also color correct this in any way we wanted. We can also add in a glow. Just uncheck the A icon to uh, not affect the alpha with the glow. And go into the glow, decrease the uh, glow size a little bit and uh, decrease the glow itself quite a bit, like half. I think this is pretty good for the lighting. Now, let me just um, grab all of these and move them over a little bit. Let's just um, color correct the um, let's just color correct the HDRI first. So yeah, that's looking a lot better already. Let's also add some contrast to that. Let's also take this to something like zero point twenty five because it was very bright. Now there is a few more things we need to do. First of all, we need to add some heat distortion around the fire. And we need to add some clouds in the distance. And then last but not least, we need to add some uh, color grading just to tie it all together. First of all, let's push the merge that's merging the fire a bit over. Now we have the fire isolated, so that is really nice, especially when we want to displace only the area that's around that, essentially. So add a displace in between the plate and the fire. Uh, and then create a fast noise and pipe that into the displace. Now, if we increase the scale of the noise, the detail and the contrast, 
and the seeds rate. You can see we have some quick and dirty distortion already. This is affecting the whole image though. And we want it just to be around the area where the fire is. Luckily, we have uh, essentially an isolation of the fire. So let's just use that. Pipe this into the blue mask of the displace. Now you can see that the displace is affecting only the area of the fire. So if we uh, put the fire back on by viewing this, um, this merge here, also add a erode and dilate node like this. This is just to increase the distortion amount. So if you maybe write in something like 0 0.02, essentially this white area here is um, the area we are allowing to be affected by the distortion. So if I just turn this off and on, you can see it's a quite a huge difference. If we have this on now, and then we view the uh, merge with the fire, now you can see there is some pretty decent distortion happening. Maybe we could even make some changes to the distortion and increase the displacement like that. That's maybe a little too big, something like that. So with the fire on, that's looking good. However, we have a lot of this distortion as the engine is coming up towards the camera and it's a bit too much. I would like the distortion to be just as it's passing the camera like this. So at frame 55 in the displace node, I'm going to go to the settings and then over the blend setting, just click here to add a keyframe and then drag this all the way to zero and then go forward a few frames and then enable it here. So it'll be like we get it as it's flying by. Yeah, like so. Um, we could also um, add a blur node. Let's just view the mask and see what we're doing. And then go into the blur node and uh, play around with the amount of blur, like so. That would also blur the effect of the displays. Now, if we put the fire back on, yeah, now we have some distortion too. That's pretty nice. And with motion blur as well, it's going to be even better. All right, so that was the distortion. And now let's uh, go back and add some um, clouds in the skies. So there's a fantastic node that we will use for that called volume fog. So just shift space, volume fog, pull this a bit over here. Now there are two things a volume fog needs to work properly. And number one, it's um, a world position pass. So go into the render 3D under output channels, uh, enable world position pass. And the other thing it needs, it is a 3D scene. So we can pipe the camera into the pink input of the volume fog node. If we view the volume fog node, and then we come into the shape here, change the shape from cube to sphere, and then increase the size a lot, maybe like to a hundred. I see the whole screen became white, but if we go into the noise, change the detail, and then noise scale, we play around with this setting, you can see we are definitely doing something here. We can increase the size a little bit more. Another thing you can do, you can actually make these clouds interact with lighting. But first of all, let's just try to color correct them a little bit. So if we were to choose the volume fog, choose the eyedropper and select the color from the background. Now you can see the clouds blended in nicely. This would do very well for some light clouds. But what if we want to increase the amount of clouds? We can absolutely do that by building on this with more volume fogs. Just uh, copy the volume fog, pipe the camera into that as well like so, and the footage into it. Actually, for this one, we're actually going to be making a merge 3D. We're going to pipe the camera into the merge, and we're going to pipe the merge into the volume fog. Let's also go into the merge 3D, settings, hide incoming connections. Now, if we just move this up here for a little bit, like so. Yeah, if we now add in a directional light, add it to the merge and go into the volume fog node, the new one that we created, go into light and enable do lighting. If we view the volume fog and then go into the merge 3D in the left viewer, and we can essentially affect our clouds with light. And if you want to see it better, we can increase the density of the clouds. Now you can see I'm rotating the light and you can see that the uh, volume is being affected by this. So I'm just trying to match the direction of the sun. Uh, now in the scene, the camera is pointing at the moon. So I'm just trying to make the sun, the directional light face the um, camera. So like this was the previous one without lighting. This is with lighting. Now, if we tweak some settings here, 
increase the density all the way maybe we can also play with the uh, gain setting in the noise tab we can also go into the color tab and this has a gain setting as well yeah let's just make one final adjustment to the reflection go into the color and choose fog only and we merge this over like that we now have two separate volume fogs creating a very convincing sky with various amounts of clouds and stuff and i think that's plenty for what we're trying to do now it is nighttime and we are still in linear space so if i turn off the lot that i had on earlier if i just turn that off and this is how it's actually been looking all this time so we need to now convert this back to how we want it to actually be so create an ocio since i use aces I'm going to be using that. There are plenty of tutorials online for that, but essentially you're going to need to download a config file. I'm going to open the config.ocio. I'm going to choose my source space as Aces CG, Aces CG, and I'm going to choose output rec 709 as my desired color space. Uh, after this node, we can now do color corrections, adjust the gamma and uh, adjust the gain and contrast until you find something that you're happy with. Now I instantly see that there are some artifacts with the vector motion blur. The real way to do it would actually be to go into each render 3D node. So this one and um, go into the settings, enable motion blur. The quality is set to two by default. Oh, and also if we press this button to enable motion blur, you can see what it's doing. Maybe four is enough for this one. As you can tell, it's it's affecting performance quite a bit, but this way is a lot more accurate than with the uh, optical flow and vector motion blur. Actually, as a final adjustment, the final one, I promise, we can go to the embers and just put 200 on those to have a bit more sparks. Okay, guys, so this is the finished result. There are probably still things you could do to um, improve upon this, but I think we're going to call it there. Alright guys, thanks for watching, hope you learned something. Uh, if there's something you would like me to make a video on in the future, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Uh, but yeah, see you next time.